Hello, this is Dr. Courtney Alston. Please leave your name and message after the... Well, just kidding. Uh, kind of. <laughs> uh, it's kind of true. Yes, you can officially leave a message with Courting Happiness. We have launched our own voicemail. We have lift off, and I'm so happy to share that with you. You can leave a message about how the podcast has helped you or share a question, pitch a future topic, or simply tell us that we're doing a great job. We would love to hear that, hear from you, and much more. Grab your phone, laptop, or your tablet and leave a message right now. Go to our website at drcourtneyalston.com forward slash voicemail. That's drcourtneyalston.com forward slash voicemail. So let's get back to the podcast. Welcome to the Courting Happiness Podcast. This is a space where self-care becomes part of your day. A space where you learn evidence-based strategies to help your life, share it with those you love, and cultivate well-being at work. I'm your host, Dr. Courtney Alston. I'm a former news director, television reporter turned happiness scholar, TEDx speaker, and transformational trainer. I also understand hardships. While working my dream job in television, I lived a nightmare suddenly becoming a young widow after 86 days of marriage. Marriage. I became committed to learning more about resilience, healing, and happiness. This is how I discovered my area of research, which is positive psychology. Now I'm living my calling of training individuals and organizations on happiness. And my new chapter begins with being happily engaged. The courting and courting happiness is about a true courtship. I like to say commitment with happiness. The K in courting stands for the vulnerability of sharing my story, inspirational interviews with phenomenal people, the Fusion of positive psychology and so much more. You'll learn how to commit to your well being one episode at a time. I hope you subscribe and share. So, are you ready? Let's get started. Welcome to episode 74. I'm Dr. Courtney Alston. I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you so much for listening. So this episode is going to be a little different. Um, I want to share something with you um, that's recently happened and to kind of keep you updated. Um, so for quite a few days, actually for quite a few months, I've been ill. I've been dealing with a variety of different health issues, but one of which was vomiting and nausea and abdominal pain. It was so bad that I was frightened to eat because every time, most of the times that I would eat, I would end up vomiting. Um, I was just, you know, dizzy and, um, and, and there's days I thought, okay, I'm getting better. Uh, cause I even changed my, my, my diet, my lifestyle. So I am, I'm vegan now. Um, it had been vegan for actually been vegetarian for the past few months and did just transition to being vegan probably now it's five weeks or so and so I you know changed my my lifestyle and and still sick just still you know trying to figure out what is going on here and so early Saturday morning um kind of like Friday night into you know, Saturday morning and Friday night is actually our date night. My fiance, Ken and I, we have, we, we designate Friday evenings as our, as our date night. And um, so of course we, I had food that night and I think I might've had um, steamed vegetables, edamame and steamed rice. <laughs> right. And then next thing I know, I'm sick again, I'm sick again. And I'm constantly now in and out of the bathroom, um, unfortunately vomiting again, experiencing nausea and dizziness. And after living in the bathroom, not only that night, but as you can imagine for the past few months, but then for the past seven days that week, I, I threw up um, or experiencing, you know, this dizziness and, you know, and vomiting and so forth for about 
five out of the seven days. And so uh, if you can only imagine how, how, um, you know, how that made me feel and just the exhaustion at behind that. Um, and also, I guess I should have referenced at the beginning of the show that, <laughs> that I, I, me sharing some of this, I guess it's kind of graphic talking about vomiting and nausea and so forth. So my apologies for that, um, for not giving you that warning. But um, so early Saturday morning, suffering, uh, Ken uh, has, you know, witnessed seeing this. Right. And he's been so concerned. And so it was early Saturday morning. He says, baby, you have to go to the emergency room. We are going to the emergency room. And normally I would say, oh, no, you know, I've gotten better or uh, maybe I just need to rest. This time I would I, I said. OK. Let's go. So um, and I think it's because of the fact that throughout the week of having the intensity of, of um, days of suffering. And I felt like my body was chanting Ken's words, like it's time to go to the hospital. So when we arrived, I spent you know, time processing being there. And, I, and, and it's interesting because when I got there, immediately when Ken parked the car and, and you know, he assisted, on driving me up to the front. And I said, no, 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 I wanna, I, I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna part from him. So I said, no, I, I wanna walk with you. I'm okay, I'm okay to walk. At that point I was okay to walk. Um, although I was feeling very dizzy and so forth. As you can tell, to see, I can, I'm a little stubborn. Um, so, so um, but I think what happened psychologically, I you know, got to the hospital and I thought to myself, wow, the last time I was at a hospital was, six years ago when my mother was transitioning. So that hit me. And, um, and then I, you know, my, I, I, for those who are new to the podcast or who may not know, um, my mother died six years ago from sarcoma cancer. And uh, she transitioned in a hospital and then we brought her home uh, to peacefully die at home. So, you know, that was the last time I was in a hospital. And so now here I am with the love of my life. Uh, and I felt a sense of calm with him um, because of his presence, his love and support. He is just incredible. You know, I, I uh, at the beginning, we initially met, I called him and I still call him this, my Superman. And he just exemplifies that every time. And so that morning, we got to the hospital at 4 a.m., 4 a.m., and I wouldn't have imagined at 4 a.m. because my thoughts were, oh, they'll probably give me something, and then we will head back home. I wouldn't imagine that <laughs> it would turn into like an overnight stay and a new decision about a new health issue. So. Doctor said that the problem was my gallbladder. And so on Saturday, I had to have surgery to remove it. So even as I speak to you right now, as I record this episode, I am in recovery. Um, the interesting part is that as I record this episode, I am actually literally into bed doing it, <laughs> into bed doing it. But this podcast, talking to you, is so, it's so healing for me. Even while I was in the hospital, I thought about communicating through the podcast and being able to talk to each and every one of you. And I will admit, because I've been suffering with various health issues, I'm not a stranger to the bedside turning my studio or turning the bed into a studio kind of thing. Um, and some friends are aware of that, but I wanted you to be aware of it. Um, so I'm not, it's not a, it's not a strange dynamic for me, but it's a strange dynamic for me to share it. And, and I think what's has, what happened is that I feel like 
I've learned so many lessons as it relates to the hospital visit, the surgery. It's really taught me the value of, of just putting everything out there, right? And just being able to be, as, as I share with my students, I feel like sometimes I'm overly transparent. Um, but, you know, in this case, you know, that's something that I, I didn't share. I, you know, I just didn't think anything of it. But after spending time in the, in the hospital um, and then now being home recovering and wanting so much to talk to you, I thought, you know, I wanted you to know that. I wanted you to know, because I think it's so important for us to always have an idea. And I, like I said, I, I value transparency. So this will be a concise podcast while I focus on, on my recovery, but I wanted so much to talk with you. So even when I, like I said, even when I was at the hospital, I was thinking about talking with you and, and, and uh, thought about elements of the podcast. And I'm learning so much about how much being sick made it hard for me to focus on things, either seeing things or, you know, even missing some things. Um, but you're always working to do your best when you're dealing with different challenges, right? And the challenges that I felt, you know, d- dealing with why you know being sick and dealing with health issues, have certainly taught me that. It's made me also see time differently. Um, and that's not a surprise because I, I feel like it's made me see time differently. Like yet again, you know, I, I spent time in a hospital thinking about how vulnerable we are when we're there. Right. I thought about how the last time again I was there when my mother was dying and 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 then thought about how vulnerable she had to be with letting people wash her or clean her, or, you know, and in 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 very you know intimate moments that you know I just thought, wow, it's such a vulnerable, it's such an interesting, vulnerable place to be and a space to be. And so one of the things that I just, I just made me just value so much was, you know, was time because Ken and I ended up spending 30 hours there, 30 hours um, at the hospital. And so, you know, cause, and it's interesting because when I think about time, it's almost amazing because I felt like time felt a little different in the hospital, you know, um, because at one point I didn't even have a clarity. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, it's Sunday already? Because uh, remember, we, we, were, we got there at 4 a.m. on, on uh, Saturday. But it's also made me value time even more. And, I, and the reason why I say that is because when I suffered loss of my late uh, a husband um, when I was 25 years old and the, you know, the day that he died was my mother's first chemo treatment. It made me see time differently. This time it was processing all of those experiences and then looking at myself because as I, I, I thought about it, I'm like, well, this is my first surgery. I've had eye surgery before, but nothing very intense where there's an anesthesiologist or and so forth. So so, so I guess I was also looking at the fact that of my relationship now to the hospital and then my relationship as it relates to my own health, it put me in this place of gratitude. I'm always in gratitude, but this one, this time, it, it, was, it was a deep sense of gratitude. I mean, I, like I said, I live in it, but it just made me just really just just really kind of almost feel like I was breathing in it to a degree. I, I you know it's 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 an interesting dynamic to be able to to share all of this with you. Um, well, first I will say that when I was living or breathing or consuming or immersed, right, in terms of all levels of gratitude. I, I sat and I thought how grateful I am for my fiance, how grateful I am for Ken, 
Ken is my rock. He is my everything, the love of my life, my best friend. Um, he's my everything. And of course, my Superman. And, you know, when he saw me in the bathroom, he said, you know, we're going to the emergency room. I, I'm so grateful that he said that. I'm so grateful that he was there every twist and turn. You know, even though, you know, I mentioned the parking lot where because he he's such a gentleman. He's like, no, I want to drive you right to the door. I'll be right there. He's always right there, guys. He never leaves my side and he never left my side at the hospital. I was just so grateful for that. Every step I took, he was there. Every place I ended up going to, he was there. And he didn't leave me at all. He just, you know, um, I'm just so, I'm so grateful. Um, but I'm, and it's not just simply grateful that, you know, he, 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 he was there. I was grateful that he could be there because I know people who have suffered during this time during the pandemic, you know, who have gone to the hospital, gone to an emergency room, and they've had to leave their loved one in, you know, uh, like my friends who are suffering, going to the hospital, their, they, their spouse or significant other is in the parking lot because of the restrictions during the pandemic. So I was so grateful. I was so grateful that he could be there, that I knew that he was there in all on all levels. I could see him, I could hold him, I could talk to him. I could just be present with this amazing man who, um, so uh, one of my favorite songs is by um, Martina McBride. And it's, it's, he's amazing. And it's, uh, the, the song goes, everyone calls you amazing, but I just call you mine. And every time I think of that song, every time I hear that song, every time I sing that song, <laughs> I think of I think of Ken. Um, so having him there was just you know just so grateful for that gift, which which made me think about positive relationships. I've talked I talked about that often during the podcast, um, and the power of positive relationships, you know. But I don't know if I shared this with you. So when I was working on my PhD, um, I had an amazing therapist in Florida who would often share this with me. She would often say, you need to see how people show up for you. you she says, you need to see how people show up for you. I see what she means. I so see what she means. See, how Ken shows up for me melts my heart it brings me to tears. And I think partly because of not only the man he is, but then also the man that I grew up having. I, I would see my father never leave my mother's side when she was in a hospital fighting cancer. I remember there was a time she literally lived there. I say lived because it was like 30 days. He never left. He never left. So my heart while I was at the hospital, and interestingly enough, I posted about this. I woke up after surgery and I just stared at Ken because my heart was smiling and I was smiling. Just witnessing, witnessing all this for myself in terms of what I've seen in my own family dynamic, but then also being able to share this with him and he was so calm and positive and cheered me on and held my hand and told me you know it would be all right and the interesting part to all of that is because Ken is home he is home for me I felt a sense of calm even though I was going through this newness, 
and this unexpected event of what do you mean my gallbladder? You know, just, you know, just completely surprised. Then when I think of positive relationships, I think of my friends whom I, I call my family, chosen family, biological family, family, family. I have friends who are part of my self-care squad who I was texting in real time in the hospital. And, you know, they would text me back how, you know, they're praying for me or just sharing highly empathetic words and support. And of course they've been there throughout seeing me uh, with levels of suffering. Plus it was the friends that I reached out to and I shared it publicly on social media. Oh gosh, the love from everyone. You know, people contacting either myself or Ken and meet you like a message or, you know, cause I was kind of in and out since I was um, at the hospital. But letting me know or letting us know, I should say, you know, what can I do to help? You know, I'm here for you, you know, or just calling or texting or just wanting to know I'm okay, wanting to know that we're okay. <sighs> so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I can see, it's interesting, I can see what my therapist in Florida meant by you got to see how people are going to show up for you. You got to see how people are going to show up for you. And as soon as I came back to the room, Ken, Ken was there sharing with me. Our friends and family, of course, were worried. And, and of course, you know, who contacted him or, you know, about me and, and um, trying to keep up with, with what everyone else was sharing and saying. Um, but as you know, now I'm home because I just share with you what I just turned my uh, studio into for just right now. <laughs> um, so as I recover from home at our at our home, um, you know, I love how the other day I can have to take me back to the doctor on Tuesday for another test. And and I go. I, I looked on our porch and I go, Ken, there's like bags of groceries. And he goes, did you order groceries? I'm like, I had to think about it for a second, guys. Because like I said, when you're, when you're dealing with health challenges, sometimes you just don't remember what you do, right? You just don't. And, uh, and so he, he, you know, walked up to the, to the porch and, and I'm in the car and I'm like, did I order groceries? And uh, found out it was my dad, <laughs> my dad surprised me with groceries just things for me to have in the house um to you know as I as I heal just amazing um I'm, I'm just so grateful and I want to admit I have so many people that have just shown so much in terms of compassion and empathy. I just, I just think it's so important to recognize and to, and to value that. And, and I will admit, I think some of, one of the reasons why my therapist in Florida would share that with me, because there was a time when I, she, I think she questioned how certain people were showing up for me. But now I just, I live in an incredible dynamic of seeing so many people show up for me and then seeing, you know, friends, family, um, correction, family right because you know friends are my family um and of course the love of my life and I'm also grateful that you show up you show up as listeners to this podcast you know we've had some incredible growth because of you and I am extremely I am so grateful now, as I mentioned, those 30 hours in the hospital, I, I feel that they were life changing. I look forward to sharing more with you as I heal. I want you to think about if you've had a life changing moment in the hospital or have you found yourself being strengthened by something life changing with the people that you love, the positive relationships in your life. I, I would love to hear about them please share them with me. Um, feel free, you can do it in our, our um, 
Facebook group. You can also go to drcourtneyalston.com in a podcast section. We have a voicemail that you can leave, but I would love to hear your stories as well because I'm still processing because literally this just happened days ago. Um, but I, I, I would love to hear from you. And if you're right now coping with health issues, my thoughts are with you. My thoughts are with you. Well, um, I, uh, I hope <laughs> that I sounded okay, considering um, I'm in recovery and, and um, been in and out of, of, of sleeping and, and, uh, and, you know, um, and trying to rest. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to rest, but I just wanted to say how grateful I am for each and every one of you. I hope if you're going through something and your body is speaking to you, I hope you are listening because our health and our well being are our most important jobs that we have. And again, I love to hear more about your journey. And I'm looking forward to sharing more about mine as it relates to this health issue, as well as other health issues that I will share with you in future episodes as well. Thank you so much for listening. Let's continue this conversation online. Email us at podcast at drcourtneyalston.com. That's podcast at D-R-K-O-R-T-N-I-A-L-S-T-O-N dot com. Join us on Instagram at Courting Happiness. Don't forget that's courting with a K. Also, I hope you join our private Facebook community. You can find us at Courting Happiness podcast community. Our private Facebook group is a safe haven to share, meet more people looking to build positive relationships, focus on well-being and create a happier life. Now, are you ready to spread happiness? We hope you subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, co-workers, and all the important people in your world. We release a new episode every Thursday. Congratulations on your continued commitment to your courting happiness journey. Thank you so much for listening. We want you to be well, be happier, and be kinder to yourself. We can't wait to see you next week. <laughs>